Hello and welcome to another Drug Chug episode, and today we'll talk about nitrates and how they work, plus some pharmacology. Let's get right into it. So here's a breakdown of everything in this video. There'll be timestamps down below and a short quiz at the end to see what we retain. So to understand how nitrates work, we need a quick overview. And to do that, we kind of need to look at the heart. So the first thing we need to know is something called angina pectoris, which literally means chest pain. And here we could see a patient holding their heart and they're having that chest pain and that's actually caused by the heart. So let's take a look how. So here we have the heart, and essentially there's a balance between the oxygen supplied and the oxygen demanded by the heart. Because remember, the heart is a muscle. So as it keeps pumping, and if it pumps harder and faster, it's going to need more and more oxygen. So the issue with angina pectoris is there is a imbalance of oxygen supply and oxygen demand meaning the heart is demanding more oxygen than it can actually pump to itself. So let's take running, for example. You know, if we run, obviously our heart rate goes up, and the demand for oxygen for not only the heart, but essentially the whole body, will go up. So the issue is that the oxygen supply isn't getting to the heart fast enough or efficiently enough. And when this happens, when there is less oxygen supply and more oxygen demand, right, then we have something called ischemia, which literally means not enough oxygen, and that could damage our heart. But the heart knows that it's not having enough oxygen, and then that's when we'll see patients have angina pectoris, because the heart is literally hurting because of the lack of oxygen, and they feel that chest pain. So now that we know a little bit about the backstory of having chest pains, let's talk about nitrates and how they work. So here we have our first three nitrates. These are the most common. We have something called nitroglycerin, which is the most common. And then we have longer acting nitrates, which we'll talk about in detail later, called isosorbide mononitrate and isosorbide dinitrate. So since we said the issue with angina, that chest pain, was the lack of oxygen supply to oxygen demand, what we need to do is increase the oxygen supply, right? If we need more oxygen, we got to figure out a way to allow the heart to have more oxygen. And in a nutshell, that's what nitrates do. They allow more oxygen to go to the heart. So here we see we have veins and arteries that lead to and from the heart. And remember, oxygen is carried through blood cells, right? Your blood and your hemoglobin inside the actual blood cell holds oxygen. So the way nitrates work is they actually dilate the veins leading to the heart. And this is also called preload, meaning before the blood supply. And if we increase the preload, if we dilate those veins, we allow more blood to easily flow in with oxygen. So now we know that nitrates dilate the veins, allowing more blood and more oxygen to reach the heart. So how does that actually happen, right? So if we have a patient like this one here, and we give them nitroglycerin, Essentially, what happens is that medication gets absorbed and nitric oxide, which is part of the medication, is released. So that nitric oxide in our body will allow the formation of something called cyclic GMP or abbreviated as CGMP. And cyclic GMP in our body allows for smooth muscles to relax. And smooth muscles are like our veins and arteries. Now, when the smooth muscles relax, we get that vasodilation. And because of that, we see an improved blood supply and we have an increased oxygen supply to meet the demand. 
So essentially, again, we're just increasing that supply to the heart so that it has efficient oxygen. So when do we actually use these nitrates? Well, there's two realistic possibilities in our patients. So we have something called acute angina, meaning they have severe chest pain, and we need to treat their chest pain right now. And we use the nitroglycerin for that. It's very quick acting. It dissolves under the tongue, and it gives very fast relief. And on the other side, we have chronic angina. And here, we use our other preventative measures. We use the isosorbide mononitrate or dinitrate. And again, this is more of a preventative cause. These last a lot longer. These last for 12 hours. And the reason a patient may need these drugs is that their blood vessels may narrow. For example, a patient can have coronary artery disease. We could have plaque buildup in the veins, leading less and less blood flow to the heart, which could lead to the ischemia and the chest pain. So let's dive a little bit deeper into the actual drugs and the dosing. So to treat the acute angina, we said we used nitroglycerin. The brand name is nitrostat, meaning immediate use, right? So nitrostat. And here we have the dosing of 0.3 to 0.6 milligrams sublingual every five minutes. Again, we're using this to treat and it's very quick acting. So a patient can actually use this up to three times. And the way we want to counsel them is, first, we want them to sit down. We want them to dissolve under their tongue. And then they have to call 911 if their angina persists after the first five minutes. So after the first dose, if they don't feel well and they're still having chest pain, they need to call 911 so that the paramedics can come assuming that the second or third dose doesn't work because it is an emergency. Now for the chronic preventative nitrates, we have isosorbide mononitrate. Brand name is Imdur. Dur because of duration. They last a long time. The dosing is anywhere from 30 to 240 milligrams by mouth daily. Now it is extended release. It does work for 12 hours, but it also requires a 12-hour nitrate-free interval. If you don't take a 12-hour break every day, then these medications stop working. You build up essentially a tolerance. And the second medication is the isosorbide dinitrate, or isordil, and the dosing is 40 to 160 milligrams by mouth daily. This is also extended release. And this one also requires that 12-hour nitrate-free interval. Now, one thing from the chronic side versus the acute side, these chronic medications have to be swallowed whole, right? They're not sublingual. They don't dissolve. They need to swallow it whole. You can't chew, break, or crush these extended-release capsules and tablets. All right, so let's talk about some side effects and drug interactions. So the big things here is patients taking these nitrates can have headache. We could see them having flushing, so redness. They could become dizzy, or they could have something called orthostatic hypotension, which basically means low blood pressure when they get up too quickly, so they get very lightheaded. Now, all of these side effects have to do with vasodilation, right? So as we dilate those veins, we get these very distinct side effects. Now, we do need to talk about drug interactions, and there is one that you need to know. You cannot use nitrates with PDE5 inhibitors. These are erectile dysfunction drugs, so think of Viagra, Tadalafil, which is Cialis, and essentially, when both of these drugs are used at the same time, it could cause severe hypotension, so a dramatic drop in blood pressure. And a quick overview on how it causes this severe hypotension. Remember, when we take nitrates, it has nitric oxide, which help with the formation of cyclic GMP, which then cause vasodilation. 
Now, the cyclic GMP that causes the vasodilation is broken down by PDE5, right? So if we take a PDE5 inhibitor, we stop the breakdown of cyclic GMP, which increases the vasodilation effect even more to the point where it could be potentially harmful for our patients. All right, so we made it to the end. So let's have a real quick summary of everything we learned. So we know ischemia, which means not enough oxygen for a tissue like the heart, is due because of an imbalance of oxygen supply and oxygen demand. This imbalance can cause something called angina pectoris, which is that chest pain. So then we talked about nitrates and how they work. So we know that they release nitric oxide, which help with the formation of cyclic GMP, causing vasodilation, which actually improve the oxygen supply to the heart. And then we talked about three major drugs. We talked about nitroglycerin, which is our nitrostat, and then our two chronic medications, isosorbide mononitrate and isosorbide dinitrate. So these two here, remember, they need a 12-hour nitrate-free interval to prevent that tolerance buildup. And then we also had our acute angina, so the nitrostat, and then the chronic agents that we just talked about. Then we went into the side effects. Remember, everything that had to do with vasodilation. So we had headache, flushing, dizziness, orthostatic hypotension. And then we had our big drug interaction. And remember, we can't use those nitrates with any PDE5 inhibitor because of the severe hypotension. So that's everything. So let's jump into the short quiz to see what we retained. Question one. Which of the following is approved for acute angina? Question two, nitrates increase which molecule to allow vasodilation? Question three, nitrates are contraindicated with which of the following? Question four, how long should the nitrate-free interval be for isosorbide dinitrate? And thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned something. And a special shout-out to my supporters.